four, three, two, one. Come Everybody on, on your feet, let's Jesus worship this morning. Come on and put your hands together. We're going to sing songs. We've been singing all week at day camp. Let's get excited. Let's dance. Let's be unashamed as we worship. We say, waking up. Waking up knowing there's a reason. All my dreams come alive. Life is for living with you. I made my decision. Lift me up. Lift me up. Fill my eyes with wonder. Every young and you love. This freedom's untainted with you. The moment is wasted. See the sun. See the sun now bursting through the clouds. Black and white. Turn the color all around, all is new in the Savior I am found. This is living, this is living now. Yeah, this is living now. Oh. You lead the way, lead the way, God, you're right beside me. Nothing like living with you. This life you created, I choose. See the sun, see the sun. Now bursting through the clouds, black and white. Turn the color all around, all is still. In the Savior, I am found. Whoa, this is living now. We can't see the sun. See the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white. Turn the color all around, all this new in the Savior I am found. See the sun. We see the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white. Turn the color all around, all this new. The Savior, I am found. This is the day, oh, this is the day. Well, welcome to the chapel. This is a very special weekend for us because this is family weekend. And what that means is obviously things are a little bit different. Next week, we'll go back to normal, which is awesome. We love it. But this week is all about celebrating the 700 students yeah. who came to our day camp and inviting their families back to church to experience church with us. And so today we've got worship, a message from Pastor Q. Next week will be a little bit different than this, but for today, let's have a lot of fun. Does that sound good? Let's do that. That sounds good. We're going to have so much fun, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. You may say, this doesn't feel like normal church. Well, you're right, but but you have an opportunity to just live in freedom. So when we're up here doing the dance moves, do them. Get your workout out of the way this morning. Track your steps. Have a great time worshiping God. Let's get your hands up <laughs> in the air. Get up on your feet. Kids, drag your parents down to the front. Let's have a fantastic morning. Are you guys ready to keep worshiping? Let's worship. Jesus, here Come we on, go! Let's continue in worship. Come on, we're going to start this song off down here just like this. Let's sing, let's declare that in God we are undefeated. When we have Jesus, we never lose. The fight is on. I hold my ground. I'm going to crash the lies of the enemy. 
I won't back down Cause I'm not alone With you, my God, I'll conquer anything Let's sing! In you I have the victory, victory You're the undefeated I know that you're the risen king, risen king You're the undefeated fight is on I hold my ground I'm gonna crash the lies of the enemy but when I doubt he won't knock me out because I know my God you fight for me yeah in you I have the victory victory I know that you're the risen king, risen king. You're the undefeated. Come on, let's shout it out. Jesus, you're the undefeated. Oh, Jesus, you're the undefeated. I will fight. I will rise above. In you, my God, I am strong. I will fight, I will rise above, and you, my God, I am strong enough. Let's sing that together. I will fight, I will rise above, and you, my God, I am strong enough. I will fight.
after all that you are, we are running. It's all that you are, it's all that we want, we're running. Chasing after all that you are, yes, we are running. Welcome to the chapel. There are amazing families all across this room, so why don't you turn around, shake a hand, and say hello. We had the best week at day camp this week. Let's all stand together. We're going to continue in worship. Sing, you give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. Restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. We sing, Great are you, Lord. Oh, great are you, Lord. It's your bread. It's your bread. Our lungs, so we pour. 
darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken oh great great are you Lord it's your breath Lift it up, every hand raised, let's sing this together. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will sing. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. sing. It's your breath as loud as you can. It's your breath. that you're here with us this weekend. You guys can go ahead and take a seat. All right, so here's the deal. I'm a little upset. It's been a, it's been a rough week. Here's the idea. This is, why, this is why I'm so upset, because this is the real Italian Super Mario. Let's face it, okay? There's been a lot of imposters. There's been a lot of imposters all week long. 
I just want to go ahead and settle it right now. And we are about to see how good a Christians you really are. Because if you can take seriously anything I say this morning in this outfit, God loves you. Okay? <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good? Oh. Everybody doing good? Man, let me just tell you something. This past week was absolutely incredible with your kids and the kids of our community. It was absolutely unbelievable. We had the, the most, it was so great to watch uh, your kids' eyes light up in God's house and how important that is. Can we just give a rousing, unbelievable woo to 175 volunteers? How about that, guys? How incredible is that? Absolutely unbelievable. And here's the, uh, these guys are unbelievable. Our interns, our summer interns did an incredible job. And we talk a little bit about numbers today because it's just amazing. But what's more important than anything else, over 350 first through fifth graders said yes to making Christ their God, their Savior. How great is that? Come on, church. That's awesome. That's so great. And the reason why we say a number is because every number is a life. Every number is a life, is a world that's been changed by not so much us and Super Mario, but by God. Isn't that amazing? For a little bit this morning, and everyone watching online, I want to talk about, I want to look at a scripture that our campers had looked at all week long, and, and, and see what it says about us as people, us about our homes. Our homes look very different, single parents, single mom, single dad. Guardians, parents, grandparents taking care of grandchildren, whatever it is, Super Mario homes have a certain attribute. The idea of this scripture that we've been using all week long has been this. Ready? Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Don't you realize, and the Apostle Paul speaking here, he says, don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. And what you notice, one of the first things you notice about the Super Mario game is that the guy never stops running. He's always running towards something. He's always doing something. He's always got something to accomplish the next level. He's always going to the next level or doing something. And that's a lot of times what, what the attribute, the mindset that we have to have even in our relationship with Christ is that regardless of where I fail and I get a new life and I start again, you get up and you keep running. But you run to win, the Apostle Paul says. One of the reasons why he used this metaphor is because the time that he wrote this letter to the church, there was something going on in a distant land called the Olympic Games. And the Corinthian church started their own games, which only became second to the Roman games called the Ichmus Games. And he used this metaphor because he's talking to the church that were entrenched in athletic activity. And he said, understand that one, only one wins the race, but they're all running to win. And then he makes this statement, they run with purpose in every step. And if you know anything about training or you've seen professional athletes, they watch what they eat. They watch where they go. They watch what's around them, what influences them. They're constantly vetting or filtering Everything from what they eat to where they go to run the race to win. They just don't haphazardly and do a little exercise here or do a little something here. There's purpose in every single thing they do. And this is some of the things that we covered this week with the kids. And I want to look at for just a little bit this morning because I want you after service to go to building D Meet some new people, take the kids on the bounce houses and the games that we have there. All of our cast of characters will be there with a poster for the kids. There's ice, the Kona ice, which is phenomenal, which is from Jesus. It's so good. <laughs> so I want you to spend time doing that. But I also want to look at what do Super Mario homes look like? What do Super Mario homes look like when they run to win? When they, regardless of what happens, they get back up and they keep running the race and running to win. A metaphor that Paul uses for our relationship with Christ. What I've noticed about my wife and I is that regardless of whatever has happened with us, we always want better for the next generation. We always want better for our kids, right? Amen? We always want them to surpass whatever we've accomplished or whatever we've done. 
So what do Super Mario homes, who always get up to win and run the race to win, what do they look like? Here's the first thing. Super Mario homes, they use life-giving language. They use life-giving language. Words are so important. The Bible says that words either carry life or death. They only do one or two things. There's no in-between. They're either defined by life or by death. But there's this great story in the Bible where Jesus, he hasn't been, he's not public yet, so nobody really knows that he's Messiah yet, he's the Savior of the world, or he's the Son of God. He gets taken out to the desert, he withstands 40 days of temptation. Every temptation that you and I would go through, Jesus went through. And came out victorious. That's why we can, we, we can relate. Whether we do or not is a different story. But, but the basis of our relationship with Christ is he can understand what we go through. Because he's been through it. So the story says is that he's been in the desert for 40 days. Withstands temptation. He comes out of the desert. And this part of the story we kind of remember. He sees John the Baptist. This guy is in the wilderness. He's been preaching. And he's baptizing people. And he sees Jesus come and he says, look, look, the Savior of the world. Behold the Lamb, some translations say. This is the Savior of the world. Here comes Jesus. Jesus shows up and he knows how significant water baptism is because he becomes water baptism. And we're going to do water baptism next Saturday at Fred Howard Park at 10 a.m. And if you understand that God is, God, Jesus is the Savior of your life and he's in your heart and you've never been water baptized, we take all the obstacles away. We got a towel, we got a change of clothes. The water is gonna be absolutely beautiful. It's gonna be like warm, stagnant, steady bath water at Fred Howard Park. It's actually beautiful. <laughs> you gotta come out. It's unbelievable. Jesus sees John the Baptist. John the Baptist says, No, you need to baptize me. Jesus says, No, I need to do this. And he becomes water baptized at 30 years old. And he comes up out of the water, and this is one of the first dialogues we use because Super Mario Holmes used life-giving language. And we get it from the Bible. This is one of the first dialogues between the Heavenly Father and his son Jesus. He comes up out of the water, and this is what's said. This is God the Father speaking. Matthew chapter 3. He says, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And there's no coincidence that the order in which these words are spoken, this is my son. Your identity comes from me. Not what culture says you are or what you are not. What society says you are or you are not. No matter what is said to you outside these doors, in this home you are somebody. Because you're my son and daughter. It's not attached first. It's not attached to something good or bad. It's attached to identity. God the Father turns around and tells Jesus, he goes, this, look, this is my son. This is whom I love. And we forget because it's the foundation of our faith. And sometimes we forget because we do live in a culture and society that the better you are, the more you're accepted. The more talented you are, the more revered you are. The more talented or better you are at something, the more lifted you up you are. Not in God's kingdom. Your first value comes from not what you do, but who you are. This is my son. And we forget that we are sons and daughters of the most high God. And we forget that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And we tend to forget that because we live in a culture that accentuates and lifts up better things or best things. So it's no coincidence that God the Father says, first let's start with your identity. Regardless of what you do, remember you're my son, whom I love. And then he praises him and who I am well pleased. Because he did something that was so significant and important to his mission and goal on earth. And I want us to get this in our homes this morning and with everyone watching online. Because this is one area that my wife and I didn't really get for a long time. I'm a type A personality guy, regardless of the Mario outfit that you see today. I like to have everything done by Thursday, drag it, kill it home by Friday. I like it. And, and we got this wrong, and we could always point back to this ball that we dropped as parents. And I want us to get this for our homes, our Super Mario homes this morning. Understand this principle. Praise. Praise is attached to accomplishment. you got to have it. 
you got to have the praise. Oh, I can't believe, what a great touchdown. What a wonderful home run. Whether you're married with children or without children, if you're single, and we have a lot of single people that, attend, that call the chapel their home church, this is an attribute that you want to look at in someone that you're thinking about spending the rest of your life with, what kind of language they speak. If they don't speak life-giving language and learn how to praise, I want you to be like Mario and what? Run, okay? <laughs> praise is attached to accomplishment. It's a take, you want a home run. I can't believe how great that touchdown was. That was amazing that you did. That was awesome. But what happens sometimes is the only time that we're putting praise to our kids or in our homes, with our spouses, whatever it is, with our families, with our neighbors, our community, whatever it is, the only time we're putting praise, uplifting language on our lips, is when a behavior, a good behavior happens. And what will happen is if there's just praise, it gets a little wonky. And I want to show you something. The next thing is you got to have encouragement. This is my son, identity, whom I love. Encouragement is affirmation based on who they are, not what they've done. You have to have both in a Super Mario home. You have to have both. See, the, the encouragement just comes from who you are. You're my son. You're so good looking because you look like your father. Look how good looking this is. Encouragement has nothing to do with whether it's based on a behavior or not. It has to do with who they are. And when you have both, the, the generation next, the next generation will have a healthy view of how God sees them. And let me tell you what happens when you only praise. Because it rings out true in our adulthood. Watch. How many people do we know that don't, that will not, that won't come to church because they've done something wrong. How many people we know, I don't want to go to church or this or that. Sometimes they blame it on a church, they blame it on church people. I get it, that's fine. But the majority of us, when we do something wrong, we immediately think, oh, I can't go to church, I'm going to be a hypocrite. I can't be in church, I'm going to be this. I can't do that because I said something wrong. I can't go there because I did something wrong. And the reality is that's not Bible. When you've done something wrong, when you've said something you were cre not created to say, and you've done something you were not created to do, the first place you should be is God's house. And that's what we forget because we think we're more loved and accepted based on performance rather than based on our identity. And so when you have praise, if all we do is praise in our Mario homes... We tend to project that on God, that he's only pleased with us when we do something good. No. Being loved and accepted by nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. You have to have both praise and encouragement. One attached to greatness and things that we've done, whether it's passing a test or scoring a touchdown. But you also have to have encouragement. You're my daughter. You're awesome. You know, I thought today, I just thought, just these words that aren't attached to performance. And if we haven't accomplished that, and I want to say this, I said it in all the services. Listen, guys, there are no perfect parents. There's only a perfect Heavenly Father. That's it. That's it. And that's why, like Super Mario, when we fail, we just get up and keep running for the prize. But Super Mario homes understand, they understand it, that we use life giving language. We praise when something is done, but man, we encourage because of who you are. And there's something here I want us to get. This next scripture is, it's not been used a lot in the context that we're talking about this morning, but I want to use it because it was a hard lesson for my wife and I to learn, bringing up our kids. There's a proverb which is called a truism about life. A proverb in the Bible is something that's true about life. It's a truism. And it's this, walk with the wise and become wise, for a company, a companion of fools suffers harm. So, so you get this idea, this truism from King Solomon, one of the wisest people in the Bible. He writes these truisms and he says, walk with the wise so who you're walking with and who you're doing life with and who you're around, you kind of tend to kind of be like them. You kind of tend, they kind of rub off on you a little bit. There's a little residue that happens. And of course, what happens for a companion of fools suffers harm. Now the context, the content for this truism, this proverb, 
in Super Mario Homes is wisdom. He's using wisdom. You walk with the wise, you're wise. You walk with fools, you hang with fools, it's going to wind up hurting you. But change the content. Be with people who don't love God, it's going to rub off on you. Be with people, the deeper principle here in this scripture, because it's a truism, the things that's true about life. Super Mario Holmes understand what the scripture means, and it's this. They know what we are exposed to shapes who we become. What we are exposed to, Super Mario Holmes understand, what we are exposed to shapes who we become. What we're exposed to, it winds up shaping to a great degree or a lesser degree, but yet still shaping. And it shapes who we become. And in our homes, we have to understand, Super Mario Holmes understand there's got to be a level every single time, listen, every single time, every single, that we look back at raising our kids and we went, yeah, oh, man, what, where, who are they? Aliens, they're aliens. Who are they? We traced it back to somewhere where we did not filter enough something they were exposed to. Whether it was a, neg listen, whether it was a negative attitude, whether it was friends, now it's social media, whatever it was. And we know this. Listen, Super Mario Holmes use life-giving language. Super Mario Holmes understand this biblical principle that what we are exposed to helps shape us. It contributes to be us being shaped. And listen, I don't care how old you are. I don't care what season of life you're in. It goes for me. It goes for all of us. Listen, we're always being shaped. But depending on what we filter will shape us the greatest. We're always, being, we're always being influenced by something. By someone, something somebody, somebody tweets something, somebody posts something. We're always being influenced. But it's because it's a biblical principle. So Super Mario Holmes get this. And we know that when we let the next generation out of the house with friends, or we're around as co-workers, or in the car line, or the cubicle, whatever it is, we know we can't help but be influenced by certain things. By certain friends, because we go to school, we go out, we're out in the public. We don't live in a bubble. Now, never meant, Christians were never meant to live in a bubble. So the idea is, so we know when we let the next generation out of the house, we know what they're exposed to, bigotry. An overstimulated sense of sexuality. We use sexuality to sell everything from shampoo to tires, amen? <laughs> they're, they're, they're exposed to racism, bad attitudes. They're exposed to... A floating moral scale. They're flo it, it's unbelievable. So for the next few minutes, what Super Mario Holmes, what I want us to do is understand this principle that what we're exposed to helps shape us. How can we counterbalance that knowing that, listen, when we send our kids out to school, we send them out sometimes to friends, we send them to the mall, when we send them wherever... How can we counterbalance knowing what can we do to create? What can we do, expose them to certain things to create an appetite? That's all we did this week with the kids was create an atmosphere that created an appetite for them to have a relationship with God. It's what we do every weekend in the adult service and all throughout the campus and all our ministries. It's to create an atmosphere that creates an appetite. So for a few minutes, three things that we can do. To expose them to certain things to create an atmosphere for spiritual growth in their life. Very simple things that we all can do right after this service, after you get Kona ice, because let's face it, that's the priority. <laughs> Super Mario Holmes, expose, expose your family to the joy of knowing God personally. Expose them. We want to increase the chance of them ha having a spiritual appetite. By putting things in front of them that influence them because we know the things that we are, we're exposed to help influence us. And they help shape us. Expose them to knowing God personally. Here's the deal. I want to go ahead and say it. The, the, the image that sticks out every single year in my head. This is our fifth day camp. The biggest ever. Is a first through fifth grader having an opportunity in God's house. And, be, and learn, taught how to pray and ask God into their situation in life. 
watching a first through fifth grader go to one of our trained prayer people and some of our trained leaders to teach them how to pray because God is not over there. God is right here. God is a personal God. It's not about religion. It was about relationship. And it will always be about a personal relationship. And watching your first through fifth graders and first and fifth graders in our community learn. No, no, actually it's one of the reasons why God stands at the door and knocks. Remember that scripture? It's because he wants to be asked in. So are you being bullied? Are mom and dad fighting? Are you having trouble with your brother and sister? Are you having trouble getting the concept of algebra, which we know is from the devil? <laughs> but no, invite him into the situation. Invite him into the situation. It, invite him into the season of our life. I, I, I kind of feel, let's face it, guys, junior high suicide rate between today and 2006. 2006 to date, the junior high suicide rate has increased by 71% of USA Today poll. Because value is coming from somewhere else other than how God sees them. So to learn, to learn how to invite God today, here, into my situation. He's not over there. He's over there. No, the joy of knowing I can know God personally. He desires to be involved with me personally. And listen, when we first started this in my family years ago, it was very difficult because I was intimidated. I was completely intimidated by praying because I grew up Catholic. Everything was done for you, Catholic, in, in Catholicism. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying what it is. All we did was stand up, sit down, kneel. Stand up, sit down, kneel. Stand up. That's, I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying even when we prayed, it became memorization. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It was not feeling. It was just saying it. So it didn't really become personal. So prayer was done for me. So when I knew that I had to pray in my family, I was like, I don't pray. I got to pray right now. Pray? I just lost my temper and threw a shoe across the room 19 seconds ago. Now you want me to pray? It was hard. And what we did and what we learned is we just incorporated it into our life. When something great happened, we have Sunday dinners at my house, which will happen here in about four or five hours. And we'll sit around the table and sometimes we, have, we had friends come over, maybe one or two friends. And we're all sitting there eating and our bellies are full. We're kind of laughing. And we just started saying, man, thank God that we have food. Thank God. That's all. Just incorporating God into the daily, into the daily things. Well, you're a pastor. You must have prayer meetings in the bedrooms for an hour and a half with your children. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we just incorporated into the daily. I'll tell you what it still looks like. Our kids are in college now, almost graduated, one's getting married. Listen, which is what we did. I got to tell I don't feel good. Let's pray. And this was the prayer. God, right now, Michaela doesn't feel well. Watch over her. Make her well. In Jesus' name. What was that? Seven seconds. And I'm not making light of prayer. What I'm doing is it can start with a walk so that we can learn how to run to win. It's prayer and bringing it in. I just brought it into the daily. We still do it. You got a big college exam. You got a big college mid-semester mid test. Let me, let me pray. Lord, pray. I'm praying over Michael. All the things that he studied that you would bring back to memory. And in my mind I'm going, because if you didn't study it, you're going to fail. Because God is not supernaturally going to put it in your head. That's the way I pray. Anyway. <laughs> we just prayed for the prayer. We just prayed for the test. It's become part of our life. God has become part of our life because he's not over there. He's over here. Because we use life-giving language in Super Mario homes, but we also expose them to a personal relationship. It's personal. I'm having trouble with this. I'm having trouble with a friend I've known for years. I'm having trouble relating to my son. So we just invite him in. Super Mario homes, the second thing. Super Mario homes understand we need to expose them to the power and presence of God in his church. Listen, this is how we know. The things that God does in his house, God is everywhere. The scriptures say that where two or three are gathered, there I am. Also, you can get together with girlfriends, guys, hanging out, get together, sit around, pray. God is there, absolutely. But the things biblically that you'll see in the scriptures that God does collectively in his church. Church is not a building. We are the church. It's people. 
What he does in the church is far different than what he does outside of the collective meeting. And the power and presence of having first through fifth graders over 700 coming together, learning how to pray, but also worshiping, no other time would they probably put these words on their lips. And the power that happens collectively when you come together for the same purpose is unlike anything else in culture. And we need to up the exposure level because Super Mario homes know what we're exposed to helps shape us. And we know the next generation, and, and, and it continues with us in our life, we're exposed to so many things. So we're exposing them to the power and presence of God in his church. And I'm just going to say this, simply. It's just a little example. You, you know, when your kids grow up, <laughs> they want to play. They want to play sports. I would tell Michael, listen, God loves, God's sport is baseball. He loves football, but God's sport is baseball. He's still on the fence about hockey, okay? But here's the deal. And of course, sure enough, what happens? My son wants to play hockey. I'm like, do you ever see an Italian on a hockey? You ever see an Italian play hockey? One or two, maybe? No, because it's baseball. He, so what do you do as a parent? All right, we'll play hockey. We start buying this hockey equipment. It's like I need a small second mortgage, okay? The, I mean, the vest, the hat, the shoulder pads, the knee pads, the skates, the skate sharpener, the whole thing, couple of different size sticks, the helmet, the guard, the hold, the gloves. The, it's unbelievable. I noticed when we first started having a personal relationship with God, we would never go into Michael and go, Michael, it's hockey practice day. Do you want to go to hockey practice? We never gave him an option. Michael, you want to go? Let me tell you. No, you're going to hockey. You know how much money I spent on that gear? Get up. Dad, I got 105 fever. I don't care. You're on the ice. You'll cool down. Don't worry about it. Because look, I spent all his money. Are you kidding me? You're going to hockey. What's funny is sometimes as parents, and I live this, and this is why I can speak to it, we make optional <laughs> maybe the most important things. You want to go to church? And I'm not saying drag your kids to church. I'm saying expose them to the right things, expose them to these three things, and an appetite will be created where they want to be part of church. See, that's what happens. You cannot guilt Guilt and shame was never used in the Bible to motivate to, for somebody to somebody to come to God. It was always love, grace, and forgiveness. And so it was just part of our life. It's like we go to church. This is what we do. We're Americans. Americans go to church. We go to church. That's what we do. So when they went off to college, what was part of our conversation? Like buying sheets. Like buying things for their, for their rooms. Part of the conversation is where you guys going to go to church. Let's look online and see where we can find one. It was just part of our life. And regardless of where we are in our season of life, whether we realize, wow, we didn't really do those things, it's okay. Get up and keep running. That's what Mario does. Third thing, Super Mario Homes. Understand the exposure factor. So let's increase the chances of exposing them to the right things. Ready? Expose them. <laughs> Expose them to the thrill of being used by God. Somehow, some way, culture and society says you can't be used by God unless. What you find biblically is a will, what God needs is a willing heart. The thrill exposing the next generation in our homes to the thrill of being used by God. To watch these students, you can't really see how many backpacks are up here. Yeah, there, there are families that actually you go, you go to church with and that are in your community that don't have the wherewithal of the money to buy school supplies. You, Johnny, can change their world for God. What? Yeah, let, let, me, let, me, let me tell you. You can change their world. You got some folders. You got some books, loose leaf. They're, I mean, they're full. Pencils and crayons and pens. Because God wants to use you at eight years old. And their eyes light up. Like, what? Like, what? Yeah. 
because each one of us, no matter how old we are, season of life, is hardwired by God and it's not a mistake. But that wiring was meant to be used by God to move his kingdom forward. And the thrill that comes over their face when it's like, hey, let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to raise money to build these really simple kind of weird looking carts. Show that picture, guys. Of our missions team in Uganda. Because when you have to walk 15 miles with about a 62-pound jug of water, and we had all the kids try to carry this, amazing. And then go, the women in Uganda carry these on their head. And then they put it down in their hut and go, that's the water for two days. You can help change their world. What? Yeah, you didn't have to have a theology degree. And you don't even have to be a teenager. And their faces light up. And we realize the thrill. Because God's doing something on the inside and he's, I can change for God's kingdom. I can change someone, some instance, some situation for God's kingdom, for God. In my age, and what I can do, and what happens, exposing them to the thrill of being used by God. Let me tell you what happens. They begin to understand how valuable they become and how valuable they become to God. So now their value comes from God and not what culture says they are or they aren't. I said, no, you're not going to tell me who I am. Only God gets to do that. See, that's the idea. Because we know what we're exposed to helps shape us. Because it's a truism. So when we enhance and we raise the percentage of things we're exposed to, it's only good can come of it. That we know that Super Mario Homes use life-giving language. We praise and we encourage from what has been done and accomplished and to who they are. And we expose them because they're going to be exposed to so much junk and we know it. We, we are. We increase the chances of a spiritual appetite by going, it's a personal relationship. Let's pray about your test. Let's pray about how you feel. Let's pray for Susie's mom who's not doing well. Let's pray for Susie's parents who aren't doing well. It's just part of our life. Uh, we, we expose them to that. We expose them to an everyday God, an everyday Jesus. We expose them to understanding the thrill, the absolute thrill of serving, of changing things for the kingdom, for the good. And that there's power in the collective nature of us coming together as Christians more than we could ever do on our own. That's a Super Mario home. Because we run with purpose in every step to win the race for Christ Jesus. Amen. Would you bow your heads? Let me pray for you. Thank you, Lord, so much for your kingdom. Lord, for we get to hear your voice through your word. And this week, Lord, make yourself more known to us than ever before. Lord, regardless of where we failed, Lord, we get up and we run again. Regardless of where we, we have some shortcomings as leaders and parents, as guardians, as grandparents, aunts and uncles, Lord, we get up and we, we start the race. Give us the, give us the power from your Holy Spirit, Lord, to start a race we might not even start. But continue the race regardless. Teach us how to use life-giving language and filter the things that we're exposed to. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Hey, guys, don't forget to go to Building D. There are giving boxes in the back on the left and right and in the foyer. Love you guys. Make sure you get your autographs from all the characters. See you next week. Well, there you have it. We hope you enjoyed today's service. Keep up with all the chapel action on our website, thechapel.cc. Take what you learned today and apply it to your world tomorrow. That's the key. Have a great rest of your week.